Hello, my name is Aaron Cohen. Today I'd like to talk to you about the procedure called craniotomy. Craniotomy is the most basic and standard procedure we do in order to reach brain tumors, aneurysms, arteriness malformations, cavernous malformations, and other lesions to be able to complete removal and perform the procedure safely. So what's the definition of a craniotomy? Craniotomies are surgical procedures that involve cutting and temporarily removing a piece of the skull bone to access the brain. It's usually the first routine st step before a more complex operation is conducted on the brain. It is done via an incision on the scalp, typically behind the hairline. The pos position of the craniotomy varies very much in terms of its size, shape, and other characteristics, depending on the procedure and the location of the tumor and its size. It may be a small round opening, like a small bear hole, where the initial opening in the skull is performed to conduct a bigger craniotomy, and it involves portions of the procedure where the patient can be awake for an awake craniotomy, where uh, the brain is mapped so we can remove the tumor that's located in a critical part of the brain. And we typically remove a larger piece of the bone to re relieve pressure on the brain. It's called the decompressive craniotomy. And this is a relatively rare procedure in terms of the decompressive craniotomy as it's for more critical um, uh, situations. So what are the common terminologies? Number one is a bone flap, which means that a section of the bone is temporarily removed and then re later replaced after the surgery is over. And bear hole typically is a small opening or a hole through the skull using a surgical drill to create the initial hole to be able to do a bigger bone flap removal. The craniotomy is performed by uh, typically a neurosurgeon and a team of other doctors may be involved, including otolaryngologists, plastic and reconstructive surgeons, obviously anesthesiologists, critical care physicians, and all the other sort of components of the team that are involved in the uh, management of a complex cranial procedure. So what do we need to know about the craniotomy? Usually a week before the surgery, the patient will stop their Advil or similar medication as well as the blood thinners such as Coumadin because we don't want to have excessive bleeding during surgery. Several days before the surgery, a physical exam and other tests may be performed in order to make sure that you're able to undergo the surgery and handle it effectively. The night before the surgery, your physician will ask you um, to fast, most likely not eating anything more before midnight in order to prevent vomiting at the time of the surgery. And you may be asked to shower with a special antiseptic solution or soap in order to minimize the risk of infection. So let's talk about the steps of the craniotomy, which are critical. Number one is patient preparation. As you can see on the image, the patient is given general anesthesia. The head is fixated and immobilized in a three-pin skull clamp, and the hair is shaved, typically in a very selective manner around the incision. And a curvilinear or straight line is marked over the scalp, again, behind the hairline for cosmetic purposes to uh, be able to reach the skull. Step two uh, is the skin incision, where the skin around the incision line is scrubbed with antiseptic solution and sterilized. The skin incision is made, and certain clips are applied around the incision to minimize the risk of bleeding. So what happens during the craniotomy, and that's step three. The muscles, if present over the skull, are flapped back and secured in place. Small opening, in other words, a burr hole is made with a surgical drill, and the craniotome, another specific drill type, is used to saw through the bone and lift a um, piece of skull that will be of adequate size to conduct the procedure. So. Um, Let's go ahead now to step four, where it's the procedure or the step of the operation where the brain exposure and surgery is conducted. The outer covering of the brain, in other words, the dura, is cut and flapped back. The surgeon can use a variety of tools to operate on the brain to treat the brain tumor, arteriovenous malformation, or other conditions. The last step would be step five after the 
procedure is completed and it's the closure where the bone flap is reattached using small metal plates and screws any muscle or other tissues are sutured back to the original position the clips from the scalp are taken off and the edges of the scalp are sutured back so what happens after a craniotomy the um, patient is awoken from the anesthesia the breathing tube is removed and the patient is taken to the icu in stable condition and the patient is examined every hour and pain is controlled blood pressure is uh, maintained within reasonable range and again, the neurological situation and, um, of the patient is very carefully assessed. Several days after surgery, in other words, after you leave the ICU for one night, typically, you go to regular floor where your situation more stable and uh, you will ask to get up and eat more and potentially shower and increase your activity gradually. At home, you follow instructions that are provided by your surgeon. That's usually going home about three or four days after your operation is complete. And headaches are often the major symptom after the surgery and they're managed by medication or other uh, intervention. Again, blood thinners are avoided after surgery as well. So what are the activity levels after surgery? Typically avoid the strenuous activity, jogging or sex or other significant strenuous activities. Avoid risky activities like uh, driving or diving or other circumstances. Do not drink alcohol or nicotine products that can interfere with the healing of the scalp. Try to walk five or 10 minutes daily and gradually increase your activities. Do not try to get too excited and be hyperactive as that can really uh, cause you to have a setback. Sleep with your head elevated, apply ice three times a day or a warm compress, whichever one helps you most for 15 minutes to reduce swelling and pain. And drink water and foods in high fiber to prevent constipation causes by the pain medication or in other words, the narcotics. The incision care is obviously critical. I feel comfortable for the patients to take a shower as early as two days after surgery. In other words, you can wash your head and scrub everywhere else, but don't scrub on the incision, but the incision can be allowed to have water run over it. Gently wash the incision site uh, if needed uh, for about a week after the surgery, start doing that, and then avoid hair styling products or other related cosmetic um, uh, preparations for about a month after surgery. In terms of medications, take acetaminophen or Tylenol for headaches. Try to minimize the use of narcotics as much as possible and only use them if it's absolutely necessary. Again, avoid NSAIDs like Advil, Aleve, or other blood thinners after surgery. So, um, what are the complications that you should be watching for after surgery? and uh, you need to call your physician or healthcare provider. Fever or chills, redness or swelling, or any drainage or bleeding at the time of the incision should be reported right away. Swelling at the side of the incision, especially with the drainage of clear fluid leaking from the ears or nose, are all very reportable. Excessive slippiness, confusion, increased headaches that are not usual, or weakness in your arms and legs also can be warning signs of a complication. Obviously, any visual changes, speech abnormalities, or breathing problems should also be reported right away. Specifically, any drainage of infectious materials, such as green, yellow, or uh, pus-like solution has to be reported right away. And obviously, any recurrent seizures can be very challenging. Obviously, um, any reactions to the general anesthesia, like excessive nausea and vomiting, should also be discussed with your healthcare provider. Excessive pain at the craniotomy site can be normal. Uh, any swelling or bruising, especially around the eyes, can be normal after the craniotomy and will go away. Again, infection, bleeding, stroke, seizures, brain swelling, and uh, brain fluid leak are also potential complications of a craniotomy. 
Um, usually uh, the recovery for the craniotomy involves the fact that the bone flap usually uh, heals relatively well. It never mends itself completely as it's fixated by mini plates. Again, these are titanium mini plates. And this pro pro uh, process usually takes about two to three months. And usually the full recovery from a major craniotomy can take up to a few months and you should be very well aware of that and be very patient with yourself. Again, it's critical to increase your activity slowly, be aware of the normal headaches, be aware of other signs or symptoms that are relatively normal, and be able to differentiate those from signs and symptoms that are very reportable right away. Overall, craniotomy is a very effective procedure. When done in the right hands with significant experience, can really provide miraculous results in terms of providing the patient with a good quality of outcome. There are other procedures such as performing a brain tumor removal through the nose that obviates the needs for a craniotomy, which is more invasive. And again, if done in correct selective patients with adequate indications, I think in uh, through the nose procedure is effective. At the same time, a craniotomy procedure can be effective when it's well indicated. So each of those have their own indications and your surgeon should be very well aware of those and provide you with a very good uh, counsel in that regard. Again, um, it's an honor to be able to talk to you today and I'm more than happy to be involved in your care when possible. Please feel free to contact me if needed. Thank you.